Welcome to Inspecting, Adjusting, and Replacing Valve Bridges and Lash Adjusters for Two-Stroke Diesels. Let's start at the beginning. What is Valve Lash? Valve Lash is the space between an engine's valve and its rocker arms. It provides operating space between the rocker arm and the valves, and remember we're dealing with exhaust valves only on a two-stroke diesel, and gives the valve train flexibility for heat expansion and engine wear. It's crucial to manage valve lash. Too much or too little can cause valve hammering and lead to catastrophic valve drop and engine failure. Lash adjusters sit inside a mechanism known as a valve bridge. Their role is to manage valve lash. Setting those lash adjusters, then, is a crucial component in preventative maintenance service. To see how this is done, we're going to walk through a service procedure that applies to heavy-duty diesel engines manufactured by the company EMD. The concepts, however, apply to many premier two-cycle diesels that use valve bridges. One quick disclaimer. This is an independent production, and although we have the good fortune to be associated with many experienced EMD technicians, this is not an EMD video, and we claim no relationship with the EMD or with any other engine manufacturer. As we go through this procedure, we'll make note of certain EMD-specific concepts and terminology, like part numbers, for example. This information has been gleaned either from publicly available service advisories, and we'll provide download links in the description section of this video, or from our technicians' personal resources. However, be sure to confirm any product or ordering information with your authorized EMD distributor before making a purchase. Fair enough? Let's get started. First, a little EMD-specific background. As we've already seen, the valve bridge assembly consists of two lash adjusters, which are critical to the smooth opening and closing of the exhaust valve. While some users may replace just the lash adjusters, EMD offers complete pre-assembled and tested valve bridge assemblies with the lash adjusters inside. This is the more typical replacement method, so in this lesson, we'll first walk through the procedure to replace the valve bridge assembly and then the separate procedure to set the lash adjusters inside. Historically, the valve bridge assembly offered by AMD has been the same on the 567, 645, and 710 series engines. And there are two bridges required per cylinder. EMD factory specifications call for valve bridge assemblies to be replaced after 16,000 hours of normal operation. However, in extremely high load or high RPM operations, where the majority of runtime is at full RPM, it may be necessary to replace them more often. Users should plan to inspect and check all valve bridge clearances at each regular maintenance cycle. This helps maximize engine life and efficiency. Also, one point of clarification about valve bridge design. Any new or rebuilt valve bridge assembly from prior to 2004 should be considered old style. All valve bridges applied to new production engines and new or remanufactured parts since 2009 are of the new style. We'll use these new style bridges as the basis for the procedures we outline here. For any new or rebuilt valve bridges applied between 2004 and 2009, if they're not clearly marked the valve bridge and on both lash adjusters, you'll need to inspect them to determine their style, especially if they've been remanufactured or supplied by non-EMD aftermarket vendors. Check your valve bridge assembly itself for an assembly date stamp and a part number stamp. And there, you can also verify genuine EMD parts by the EMD logo. Here are some ways to determine whether you're working with a new or an old style valve bridge. The new valve bridge features a thick shoulder where you'll also find the part number and the build date for the lash adjuster itself. On the bottom of the valve bridge, the spring seat on the new style bridge is 3 sixteenths of an inch thick. Now, switching to the old style bridge, you can see it features a thinner shoulder. And looking at the bottom, its spring seat is just 1 16th of an inch thick. 
If these old style valve bridges have less than 16,000 hours of use and show no indication of failure, they may remain in service. It's very important that each assembly consist of matching valve bridge styles. Best practice is to standardize valve bridge styles across an entire engine to prevent confusion for the future. The safest choice is to remove the valve bridges and directly verify the valve bridge type. That also gives you a great chance to inspect the exhaust valve stems and other components not normally seen. For your reference, additional information can be found in several EMD factory issued service publications. We'll list them here, provide links below to those that are available online, and you can also find their identifying numbers in the handbook for this lesson. Now let's get to work. Here is a list of the tools you'll need for this procedure. And here is a build of materials for the job. Don't worry, both the list of tools and the bill of materials are included in the lesson workbook. First, we need to prepare the engine for this operation. So start the engine and let it build oil pressure. Now with the engine at idle, open the top deck cover and listen for signs of ticking. This is a warning sign of possible improperly set or failing valve bridge assemblies. If the valve bridges are improperly set, the lash adjusters may either bottom out or float, resulting in a hammering effect on the exhaust valve. Worst case scenario, improperly set valves can damage the exhaust valves and result in a valve dropping into the cylinder, causing serious engine damage. Properly set valve bridges will provide reliable service and the cushioning effect necessary for maximum exhaust valve life. Here's a great example of the metallic clicking or hammering sound you'll hear when a valve bridge or lash adjuster setting could be considered suspect. In the video we've linked here, the sound starts kicking in when the inspector reaches the third assembly. You may need to replay the video a few times in order to hear it clearly, but go ahead, give it a listen. This video, the one you're watching now, will pause, or you can pause it manually. When you think you've got a good sense of the clicking sound, come on back and push play on this video. Okay, here we go. It's time to remove the valve bridge assembly for inspection or replacement. First, shut down the engine, deactivate all prelube systems, and apply any safety lockout systems. Then, Remove the two oil jumper line bolts at the camshaft bearing block. Discard the bolts and the lock washers. Remove the two rocker arm nuts and set in an appropriate container for reuse. Mark or note the rocker arm caps for position and orientation, as well as the washers. Remove them and place them in a container for reapplication. As you do, inspect for any signs of failure. Remove the Complete rocker arm assembly. Use your thumbs or a suitable device to secure the injector, the middle rocker arm, and prevent it from spinning around. Use caution to prevent bending the oil jumper line. This is an example of the wrong way to remove the assembly, as the injector rocker will spin around and the oil line is very likely to be bent or kinked. This is the correct way to remove the assembly. Notice how this technician is using their thumbs to hold the middle rocker arm. With the rocker arm assembly removed, remove any gasket material from the oil jumper line and the cam bearing block. As you do this, remember these are now exposed oil passages. Provide protection against foreign material entering them. With the rocker assembly removed, perform a visual inspection of the overspeed trip mechanism and other components for signs of wear or damage. In this photo, the fuel injector lines have been removed, but it's not necessary for this part of the procedure. Compare the valve bridges to make sure all pairs are from the same style as we outlined earlier, and replace as necessary. Don't forget to check both the top and the bottom of your bridge assembly to make sure they match. Carefully inspect the valve stems for any signs of metal relocation, hammering, or broken springs. In this photo, the injector has been removed, but that's not required for this part of the procedure. Using an EMD tram tool, measure the valve stem height on all four exhaust valves. There should be no more than 1 16th of an inch variation between the highest and the lowest valve. 
If there is, replace the cylinder head or power assembly, as this is an indication of early signs of valve drop. Using the timing plate on the engine, bar the engine over to top dead center for the power assembly to be reassembled. Uh, note, it's not necessary to be exactly at top dead center for each assembly. As long as the exhaust valves are fully closed, it's sufficient. However, barring each cylinder to top dead center affords the opportunity to easily verify and adjust injector timing. Visually inspect the camshaft lobes carefully for any signs of stress, fatigue, or damage. It's important to check the entire circumference of the lobes. Any signs of flaking, roughness, wear, excess heat, or exposed copper should be further investigated. Visually inspect the rocker arm rollers for any signs of stress, fatigue, or damage, and verify that the rollers move freely. Any signs of flaking, wear steps, roughness, excess heat, or exposed copper should be further investigated. If you find a suspicious area, double check the corresponding cam load, carefully reviewing the full circumference for similar damage. Now it's time to install the new valve bridge assembly. Here are the things to keep in mind. Verify that the valve bridge seat is clean. Then, place the new valve bridge assembly into position with the casting plug facing inboard. Verify the valve bridge button is in place and free of damage. It's important to have the casting plug facing inboard and the valve bridge button in place and operating. Make sure the valve bridge is securely placed in the seat of the cylinder head once the rocker arm assembly is back in place. Now the tightening can begin. Here, our technician carefully places the rocker assembly back in its position and return the rocker assembly into position. Make sure all of its components fit into their corresponding slots and check especially to be sure that the rocker arms are not resting on the rocker arm support shafts. Double check to make sure the rocker arms fit properly into the valve bridge assembly. If they were not loosened before, loosen the jam nut on the exhaust rocker arms and turn the adjusting screws approximately three full turns counterclockwise. Note, if the injector rocker arm jam nut and adjusting screw have not been disturbed, it's wise to retime the injector, but it's not required. Apply a small amount of thread text to the rocker arm shaft stud threads. Reapply the caps in their original orientation, apply the washers, and apply the nuts by hand. Replace the oil line, inserting new oil line gasket, two bolts, and two washers, and hand tighten. Torque the rocker arm nuts, alternating between the nuts to an initial torque of 150 foot-pounds, and then final torque each nut to 300 foot-pounds. Mark each nut, washer, and cap with a grease pen or similar tool in order to provide visual confirmation that the torque is complete. Torque the oil jumper line bolts to 7 foot-pounds and mark these with a grease pen to visually confirm the torque. Now, with the valve bridge assemblies installed and the rocker arm assembly replaced, it's time to set the valve lash adjusters. First, let's review and remember that this procedure works for the new style valve bridges. In this case, we are on an EMD, so we'll reference the EMD part numbers here, and they're also available in your lesson workbook. This procedure uses the lash checking tools pictured here. Because of the differences in design between the old and new style valve bridges, it's crucial to choose your gauge setting tools properly. Please use these tools and procedures only if you're setting valve lash adjusters on an EMD engine the new style valve bridges. EMD part numbers are listed here and they're also provided in your lesson workbook. Okay, to the actual procedure. First, turn the adjusting screw clockwise until you're able to feel the load from the valve bridge spring. At this point, there will be quite a bit of clearance between the tip of the valve lash adjuster and the tip of the exhaust valve. This is normal. Also, sometimes the jam nut will seize up on the screw. If that happens, just use a 15 16 wrench to prevent it from turning while you advance the screw. Next, insert a .001 feeler gauge between the clearance at the tip of the lash adjuster and the exhaust valve stem on the outboard exhaust valve. Continue to turn the adjuster screw clockwise until you can just barely feel the contact between the lash adjuster and the valve stem. Then you can remove the feeler gauge. 
Next, insert the point one zero zero extension tool labeled set into the outboard lash adjuster area. See how the opening of the fork gauge fits right around the lash adjuster plunger. Then, slowly turn the adjusting screw clockwise until there's just slight resistance between the tool, the lash adjuster, and the valve stem. Note, if the lash adjuster is full or partially pumped up with oil, it is possible that the exhaust valve may be opening slightly and the lash adjuster is not compressing. If you notice this, just wait a minute or two while the lash adjuster leaks down. And once it's set, you can remove the tool. Now, we're going to repeat the procedure on the inboard valve side. Check the inboard lash adjusters with the 0.060 inch GO gauge. We'll reference the AMD part number here, and it's also included in the lesson workbook. This tool should slide freely into the slot area. Now, check the inboard lash adjusters using the 0 0.140 inch no-go gauge. This tool should not be able to slide into the area at all. If the 0 0.140 inch no-go tool slides into the lash adjuster slot area, stop. This indicates excessive wear or a problem with the valve. It's an early indicator of valve drop. Don't use the adjuster screw to compensate. Review the procedure and check for a dropped valve. Now it's time to tighten the jam nut. You can use a screwdriver to prevent the adjusting screw from turning while you're tightening the jam nut. You'll want to torque the nut to 80 foot-pounds and mark it to identify that it's been torqued. With everything in place, recheck to ensure that everything is properly seated and then use a screwdriver and press gently down on the valve bridge assembly. You should be able to feel the valve bridge spring tension. One more time, re-verify both lash adjuster settings. Confirm the outboard lash adjuster setting using the set tool and confirm the inboard lash adjuster setting using both the go and the no-go tools. Finally, start the engine. Let it build oil pressure and temperature and listen again for any valve clicking or tapping noises. All set? Well hey, congratulations! You've replaced the valve bridge assembly and set the lash adjusters on a premier diesel engine.